Hi, in this tutorial I want to work with EV next and compare it with EV. So stick around until the end. First go to the Blender website and head to the download section. Scroll down to the experimental section and click on download button. These are experimental versions of Blender and we need version 4.2. Please note that it says use at your own risk. It can harm your hardware but be cautious and ensure you have a backup of your Blender file before opening it. Let's download and open Blender 4.2. Alright, I've opened a project, it's a cloned file, so as I mentioned, make sure to back up your blend file. This version is in alpha and somewhat unstable, but you can still use it for your renders. Let's review the project setup for the next steps. Let's navigate to the shaders and then select world. In my scene I've set up the lighting. I downloaded the HDRs from the HDRI Haven website. Additionally, there is a light positioned behind the character. If you want to learn more about lighting and get tips, you can watch the tutorial here. And the link is in the description. This light is a point light and it's relatively weak. Alright, in the render settings, the EV render engine has been selected. This render engine is EV Next, the next generation of real-time rendering in Blender. It's still in alpha, but it will eventually replace the legacy EV. You can see the legacy EV in the list. I also have another tutorial on EV tips. There are features like AO Bloom and so on that I can't see some of them in EV Next. Maybe they will be added later in the full version, but this engine is physically based and calculates the AO automatically. Maybe there's no need to add some features, just like in Cycles. When I go to render mode using the Z key and the EV legacy engine, I can see it's not really good. Actually, EV can be useful for environments. As I mentioned in the Y Blender tutorial, if I turn off AO, it gets worse than before. Or other post effects. I mean, these render settings are good while we have this result. Okay, let's switch to EV Next and compare it with legacy version. Okay, let's not compare them. It's a different world, I think. Shadows, skin details, and many other things are more realistic. Also, if you want to know about creating a realistic skin shader, you can watch this tutorial. In the sampling section, you can increase the samples in both render and viewport. For mine, these values are good. Scroll down to the shadow section. I changed the raise value before and a high value can give me better shadows. As I said before, we can't see ambient occlusion, bloom and some post effects. Here if I switch to EV, there are many effects listed here. But it gives me a controlled ambient occlusion and I don't need to change it. Besides, I can add bloom inside the compositor. I have many tutorials on it. In the performance tab, you can modify some attributes, for example, high quality. Normals will improve vertex normal direction but decrease the speed. Don't modify other fields. Let's navigate to other sections. To get the motion blur effect that I've explained it in detail in the EV tips tutorial, you can get blur effect when camera moves. Other sections such as volume controls the fog or cloud quality if you have them. In the scene, the most important section is the ray tracing capability in this engine. These values are set by default and I didn't change anything. There is a field here called method. If I switch to light probe, it will make the ray tracing and light tracing capability volume based. So how can I use it? Press Ctrl A and light probe and then volume as explained before in the EV tutorial. And it's kind of an old way. And you can use screen mode for tracing. Changing this field will modify the ray tracing resolution. And you can see the hints on each level. I don't need to change it. Alright, I think we don't have any other work with render settings. I've explained about shadow quality and subsurface scattering in EV Next. The subsurface is a sensitive fact that all render engines can't implement correctly and realistically. 
If I switch to Eevee, you can see the SSS effect is very bad. The legacy version can't handle it. These are improvements of Eevee Next. But what are the disadvantages? Notice that it's an alpha version of the engine. For example, in some areas I have graphical bugs and light passing through the skin. Let's check for a problem. If I select a point light behind the character and increase the power of the light in its settings, you can see the effect of the light is not good and also in some areas the light is passing through, for example teeth and nose, while they are in the shadow area. Anyway, direct lights are not acting good. If I change it to an area light, it can make it worse, especially if I increase power. Another problem is when I make a change inside the scene, everything and UI will slow down for a couple of seconds. The engine is not optimized yet, but it shouldn't affect the UI like this. Alright, let's make a change to the rotation of the sky. I mean HDRA, to see other directions and effects of the light on the skin surface. Let's see other HDRIs. Ok, now let's try sunlight, a physical light. Keep a low value for HDRI. I have sunlight in the scene, I just need to enable it and adjust the X rotation. The sun is acting good. But there are some bugs when I rotate it. But the rendering speed is very good, even better than EV Legacy. It doesn't take any time to finalize the lights and shadows. For the final step, let's check the engine inside an environment. EV Legacy has been chosen and this is the result. It's acting good in environments. Let's switch to EV Next. It's very good and the rendering speed is faster than the legacy version. But what are the differences? In the legacy version I don't have enough global illumination, but I have more ambient occlusion due to AO capability of legacy version. Global illumination is calculated in real time by EV Next and it's a great benefit. Let's navigate to other areas of the scene. To calculate global illumination in the legacy version you need to use light probes and baked lights which consumes a lot of time if you choose high number for resolution. Anyway you can render with this alpha version but I recommend waiting for the full version. This engine is a great tool for real time rendering for those who are like Blender and can replace with cycles but it has a lot of work. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions and ideas feel free to share them in the comments.